What's up guys, Shaved Steve here. I know I don't know if you guys ever seen me without my beard or whatever you want to call it. I usually don't grow a beard, I'm just a little bit too lazy to shave. So that's just how it is. But this video doesn't need introductions, it doesn't need anything. This is one for the ages, honestly. This might be, like, honestly, this might be one of the best collections I'll ever purchase or ever really show off on this channel. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and... I, I can really say that this is something incredible. There's so much more, but in this video, we're going to focus on E-Series cards and VS cards. And now in this box at the bottom, there is just holo cards. So you see, I pulled a few out to give some examples. So we just have E-Series holo cards. And in these two boxes are VS cards, all non-holos, as far as I'm concerned. I hope maybe there's some holos in there. I don't really hope they're all non-holos. <laughs> but, you know, if you're not familiar with Pokemon E-Series, Super, super old sets, 2001, 2002, VS, 2002, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong. Super old Pokemon cards, incredibly expensive. On average, all the holo cards are like between $20, $40, $50, $60. And then most VS cards, non-holos, are $5, $10, 15 20 some even more. So we're going to go through it. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'll probably drag this out way longer than it needs to be. Enjoy the ride. Let's just see where we go. I think we're first going to start off with the holo cards and then we'll move to the VS cards afterwards. So let's uh, neatly put these away. I just took a few out just to kind of show it off. And then we got some more cards to go through at the end just to show off. Maybe like some other stuff. I've been buying a little bit more of my mail, I guess. But if we have time, we'll go through that. If not, let's just get through these boxes. So safely put those there. Oh, man. These are full. Like, let me show you this VS. This is just, they're all in there. This is like heaven. <laughs> this is why I do this. This is like, oh, I, I can't even explain. I. It's just, uh, now I will say before anyone, you know, goes in the comments, goes, you know, wow, you're getting all these crazy things. Like, yes, this is, you know, for me personally, this is like the goal. I just want to get as much of this stuff as like humanly possible. I like love this stuff but you know uh this is really expensive <laughs> like, I'm talking like just those three boxes you saw there probably cost me around twenty thousand dollars so I'm not getting this stuff for free uh it's not like it's a uh, charity no one's donating it to me I am just purchasing things that come up for sale it's expensive but <laughs> I don't want to see anyone going like man you got this crazy deal like, yes, the cards are amazing. No, it wasn't free. <laughs> so, let me go through that. I just took out all the holo cards. I probably messed it up. As far as I'm aware, this is sorted. But I'm just trying to show off the magnitude. We're going to zoom in. We're going to show off some holo patterns. Because these cards are just... Look, look, look at that. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this. For a while so let's zoom in let's get this done so here we go one big family picture before i dig into all this and take it all apart and there is a lot like that oh man i'm probably gonna stop and just take it all in a whole bunch during this because you know as someone who buys sells collects everything there I, I probably won't get the chance to do this ever again you know in, in my time Look at all these pseudo -wood How many pseudo wudos do we have? Oh, man. I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions. And I'm going to try and answer the, some of them in the video. So people don't ask. So yes, majority of these will be for sale. Yes, I will be condition checking them. And I will be, you know, sending all the ones that are potentially gem mint towards, you know, to PSA, I guess. I'm not going to be selling any gem mint ones raw. Anything that's near mint or played or damaged, if there is, I will be selling as singles on my single card store. So hopefully that is that is known. So we're gonna move all the stacks over here, move this light a little bit, and we are just gonna pick this up and we're gonna go slowly. So we've got nine tails here, and I'm gonna try and separate these into type, just like I normally would. So we're gonna start off with just a few piles. We've got nine tails, fire, expedition, Let's look at some of the conditions of these. Oh, man. 
Ooh. Oh, you guys see that? Should I turn the light up a little bit? Ooh. It's a little bit harsh, but oh man. So a little bit of edgeware on some. Looks like some were maybe unsleeved in a box for a while. These sleeves are old too. You can see how much how good is the person who sleeved these? I mean, look, that's not a perfect condition card here. So this is probably more on the played side, I'd say, even though most people would probably sell this as near mint, I would probably put this up as played. But these two are really clean. So I'm pretty happy. You know, when, when I make a purchase like this, I think all the hollows in total were around $14,000. And there's roughly 500. So, you know, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, Pokemon cards. Especially this day and age where, you know, in the 2024 Pokemon market, I guess. I don't really like the using that word, but nice looking Skarmory's. It's a little bit harder to sell things. So making huge purchases like this, because I'm in Australia, I can only really sell on eBay. No, like, local shows or anything like that. And I don't try to, like, push things a lot through, like, you know, Facebook, Instagram anymore. It's going to take me a while <laughs> to get through these. And I'm probably going to put these quite high priced as well. If anyone's looking to get some deals, I'm sorry. But, you know, after fees, taxes, everything all together, it's going to take a decent amount to get money back on collections like these. But that's why when you get them in and the cards aren't all beat to hell. Look at that. That is just absolutely... Can we take this out of the sleeve and show this off? Surely people want to see an unsleeved nine tails. This is peak. Now, they all are a little bit curved. I'm guessing just, you know, Japan is a very human place. Australia is a very human place. It's been sitting on my floor, this box, for about three days now. So, you know, I, I rushed to do the video, but a few things came up, and now I'm doing it now. So we got some scissors, scissors. I guess it's scissor, kind of like scissors. Execute the hollow patterns. Everyone's so unique and different. Look at the swirl. That is just out of this world. These these are like these are almost dreamy. Like I can't even. And I'm recording this in the highest quality that my computer can handle as well. Not not suffering any quality on this video. <laughs> I am in heaven right now. So if you were keeping up with all my Japan vlogs, which I'm sure some of you were, and I really do appreciate all that, it's, I didn't expect them to get as much, um, I just brought the camera, I was winging it the whole time. Obviously you can tell like there was not much editing, there's not much anything really, it's just me walking around, cute little blossom, and I didn't expect them to get anywhere near as many, you know, views, interactions, people like them as much, so... Beautiful swirl. This is such a nice... I have not seen this card in such a long time. And to have eight of them all to myself. Oh, we got Venusaurs. Two Venusaurs. Now, there is one thing with this collection. Sorry, I'll talk about the vlog more in a second. But, um, you know, there is notably probably no, like, Charizards or Karen Zombrions or anything like that. You have to expect that kind of stuff when you buy huge, huge lots. They've taken out the best of the best. So the average price is more important when everything is like more average. So you know, we see this Venusaur here has a little bit of a... Oh, that was on the sleeve. Wow, this is such a good condition, Venusaur. I mean, obviously not gem mint, but like near mint all day. Um, Yeah, so appreciate all the, the love on the vlogs. I'll probably try to... I have to highlight every card. I can't skip anything. Nice. Kabuto. Some Alakazams. <laughs> oh, man. This is something. I want to move this. This is distracting me. Oh. I apologize if you can hear any barking in the back. My puppy is uh, going a little bit crazy. So a lot of grass Pokemon so far. I think he might have had these, like, sorted into types pretty fairly well, but... When I was taken out of the box, I didn't really do that. Ariados, I think E2. I think, what is this, Town of No Map, maybe? Wind from the Sea, something like that. I always get a little bit confused with, like, the E-Series sets, because they're all split up. Mux? I think there's a Quapolis Muck in English. I'm not sure in Japanese. 
I don't like how they have the sets as like E1, 2, etc. I wish they had symbols, but you know, it is what it is. Some vile plumes. Look at that. These almost have the same hollow pattern. These two cards, like a carbon copy. Even like these two thing things there, it's all like almost exactly the same, like where the hollow she was. Whoa, that's scary. That's like almost exactly the same. Is that not almost exactly the same hollow? Does this one have it? No. Oh, this one has a very similar one up here. See, most of the hollow sheets, I'm not sure if most people know, they all have uh, very similar patterns. There's maybe like only like on a big sheet of like 100 and whatever cards they have. There's only so many patterns that could happen. So when they reprint the same cards over and over again, I mean, look here. Here's the three dots with the two dots here and the one dot there. Three dots, two dots, one. Three dots, two dots, one. Like it's the same pattern rep replicated. Repeated? Replicated? I'm not sure which word, to be honest. I'm not sure. Oh, this Typhlosion. Big swirl there. I have uh, come more accustomed to swirls. The orb thing in the top. You know, it's a little bit of a way to make make your cards feel a little bit more unique. Obviously, as a seller, anything that people will like and want more, it's good for us. Got the Nitto Queen, Jugong, five of these. You know, when purchasing something like this, when you're like coming up with a price of how much you actually want to pay, you really have to average it out. And back to the Japan vlogs, if you're watching them, I mentioned these on around day four, day three or four is when I said, hey, I bought an E-Series collection. So it's taken a while to get to me and everything, and that's fine. But I was in Japan, and while I was looking for cards, I noticed there's like no E-Series hollows. In every store I went to, I might have seen like 30 to 40 in total. Now, there was like one or two stores that had like 100 plus of them, but they, they were like $100, $200, $150, $10,000 yen each for like pseudo wood and stuff like that. And not that I think those prices are like are bad in any way, but you know, as a business, as someone who's buying to try and resell, obviously that's not like within the, the resellable range, I guess. And some of these, it's not even to the point of reselling really. Like I'm like adding to my collection slash inventory. Like the, these pseudo widows, when I list them online for sale, however many I choose to, I will be the same. I will have mine priced high. Those card stores that had hundreds of them, Likely are going to have those for a long time, but like they don't want to get rid of those because they know just how hard they are. But from in the average card store, it I genuinely didn't see that many E-Series holders. So I, I put a pretty strong price offer to, to get these. Oh, I love this Kingler. Really dark hollow on this one. This is... Christmas has come early. Oh my... This right here is my favorite Amphros artwork. I had a PSA 10 English one a long time ago, but I sold it when like E-Series English exploded. And I had a PSA 10 reverse. And I loved it. I graded it myself. And I sold it after I didn't really like English that much. It's the same thing here with this Steelix. A swirl on the orb in the same pattern. Whoa. You guys notice that? What? I just paused, but like, it's almost the identical hollow pattern again. So maybe this person got all all of these out of the same boxes, but like that, this is actually the same hollow pattern card within like a centimeter or maybe a few millimeters of margin. If I can show the, so you can show it, see it here, maybe. Pay attention to this hollow circle at the bottom, just above this text. There's another one right there. That's the same hollow circle. or well, not circle, but whatever. You know what I mean, like a star. This, this is just... And even at the at his mouth, there's like the little orb thing where the shadow is. It's within millimeters of difference of where these are. This is out of this world. Oh my lord. If I wasn't doing a video right now, I would be cussing in a great way. I would be saying words that can't be repeated. So we got some VS hollows. So the VS bulk, 
does not have hollows in it. This is just the hollow cards. Uh, dark type can go there. We have some Price's Sneasler. Roquette's Wobbuffet. I always loved this card. VS Hollows are pretty cheap. For some reason, out of all of them, they're pretty cheap. Now, like, it's, I don't want to say, like, things are cheap, things are too much, whatever, but the sealed product for these sets is really expensive. The sealed product for every set is really expensive. But, sorry, I think I just saw something. No, no. No more repeating hollow patterns. Not these ones, anyway. But BS in general. The cards, on average, three, four dollars each for some of the non-hollows. They feel cheap because you got some modern reverse holos selling for that much. I don't really know. There was a lot of product printed, but VS boxes have never really been that obtainable or cheap. So, whatever. Beautiful looking pseudo woodos. I think I might have already went through these. No, this is oh, I highlighted this at the start. How many is there? It's, I have I have six in my hand. I have seven in my hand. Did I already put some away? I did. So I had seven in my hand. Eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We have 18 pseudo woodos. I mean, thank the Lord, everything is sleeved and nice. It's a little bit harder for me to go through and like get through the cards. Beautiful crowbat here. But I'd rather them all be sleeved because while I did buy this to mainly sell as singles, it's a blessing to get a few you know, nice condition ones. Let's check the condition of these nine tails. I mean, there is definitely going to be some cards in here that, that are like PSA 10 worthy. I mean, you can see all the edges. Everything is so clean on these. One dot edge where there, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Everything else, though, you can see it's like, oh, man. Oh, yeah. This is, I'm like a pirate, right? Like, how do I explain? I'm like a pirate when it comes to buying stuff. So I'm pillaging, I'm plundering. And this is like the, the booty. The booty is here. Look at these Kingdras. <laughs> oh my God. Now, I don't want to just come on and make a video and just say, look at all this. Look what I got. Look what I got. But it was expensive. I'll say that. But it was I don't know. Money is good for some things, but there's some feelings that can't be replicated. This this kind of purchase to me feels so much better than buying like one expensive card. You know, I've bought a few expensive cards over the years and I've paid fourteen thousand dollars for them, if not more sometimes. Beautiful slow king there. Macargo. Macargo. And you know it. Beautiful. Beautiful. I, I would, to me personally, I think because I'm so deep rooted into like having so much stuff and just really enjoying stuff and enjoying multiples and this to me feels so much better having all this rather than like one expensive card. Maybe it's because I know the value is greater or whatever, but yeah, I would sell every expensive card I had to buy similar amounts of this stuff. I don't really care. This stuff is... Nitto Kings. Great looking card. Magneton. Some Expedition Cloisters. Yeah, this is crazy. Now some of these are... How do I explain this? Some of these are a little bit you know, cheaper than other ones. Like Cloister Expeditions. Cheaper than Tyranitar. So when you're buying stuff on like a per card basis... Because that's the best you can do when, you, when you're like... Let me let me highlight one of these Tyranitars. When you're showing interest in buying a lot of cards at once, if you know the exact amount of cards or you roughly have an idea, you can just divide it, divide your ending price by the amount of cards. And if you want to pay 3,000 yen per card or $30 per card or however you want to, float it. Look at these Togetix, man. How many is there? This is an insane artwork, by the way. Let me show that off in the background. 
all you got to do is 500 cards times it by $30. That can be your price. You just think of a minimum price of what you'd buy most of the cards for. And you just go. You, when you're buying stuff like this, you don't really try to seek out a discount. Because most people think when you're buying more, you should get a discount. But that's generally not the way that I try to operate. I try to be like, if I'm buying more, I should pay the same price, if not even a little bit more. Because it's saving so much time from not having to get it from so many different places. You're saving time on shipping. You're just saving time, which is like so much more important than everything. So where's my normal pile? What did I do? Oh, I put the magnetons on top. Be careful not to handle these too much. Even though I'm handling them quite a lot. Do we have any more repeated holo pattern cards? That that would be crazy. Or is that one right here? Is is that one repeated? Let me see. I can't really tell with this blissy. Uh no, it's not. No, it's not. Oh man, these look so good. I hope these cards come up on the video nice. Because this is I just threw the rabbit ash. This is something else. I I haven't seen like I saw a few booster boxes of E series while I was in Japan. A few stores, high end stores had them. But they were like thirty thousand, forty thousand it's kinda crazy to think in a booster box, I think you get forty packs in the E series. Forty packs. Forty packs? I think it's forty. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure you get 40 packs and in these sets not every pack has a hollow it's like one in every two and then the other packs have just a non-hollow rare I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it works with these series and I opened a box of expedition once a long time ago and I didn't open the box it was like I purchased a collection of an open box but all the cards were still in the packs and there was like I think it was 40 packs of e1 and 20 packs had hollow cards maybe they took out 20 hollow cards already but I'm just going off memory. Got some nice furos here. So to think that like there's people that are out there that are selling one box of E series for more than every card here. There's 500 holo cards. I mean that's like how many boxes? That's like that's a thousand packs. What is that? 20 boxes? 25? Okay, we'll go on this Steelix. Oh man, that is. Honestly, breathtaking. The way, like, that... I... <sighs> How weird do I look with shaved? You can see everything. You can see my chin. or oh, you can see this little... My, what is it? Adam's apple? Why do they call it Adam's apple? Who the, who's Adam? It's Steve's apple. You can see everything. <laughs> Victory bell. I tried to talk just then. I just choked straight away. How good is that? Uh, I mean, I didn't. I don't normally choke and make that noise afterwards, but I guess I just made that funny noise to take away from me choking. Some VS. Was that Claire's Steelix? Is that Claire? Caitlin? It's Claire? I don't know who this guy is. Someone Skarmory? There's a lot of Steel type hollows. Usually, you don't get many Steel type cards. I love this Ampros. Ampros is my favorite Gen Two Pokemon. Oh, there's already some there. Oh, that's an unsorted pile, actually. What am I doing? Whoa, whoa, what am I doing? So we have some Amphros cards here. We have so many. Where do I even get those from? Oh, my. Oh, this Arcanine is an expensive card. I will say that. I have sold these for a lot. And, yeah, that's expensive. Oh, what are the conditions like? Oh, a bit of edgeware there. Is this still near mint? I mean, if the rest of the card's really nice, I actually don't see a problem. When you have... That's, a, that's like a bad cut. That's like barely even edgeware at this point. Wait, where are we? My focus is gone. Oh, maybe a little bit of dirt there. This might be in the played category. I just struggle so much. Like, I have so many cards that I go through. And there's no way this card's anywhere near as like played as other cards that I have. But it's going to be some mental gymnastics on how to list these. 
this might be in the play doh how the hollow looks like. Oh my. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Oh. In the year 2024, people, you do not come up with stuff like this. Look at the way this fountain looks in the background. It doesn't even look like a fountain anymore. It's like a crystal feature. Slowly, slowly, Steve, slowly. Rockets Tyranitar, two of those. Usually you get a lot of those when you buy like VS stuff because it's a guaranteed card in a deck. And you can buy the completed decks with the Rocket Tyranitars in it, even these days for $200. I saw plenty of those in stores in Japan, $200 each for the complete VS Rocket deck. I don't think that's a crazy price or a crazy high or crazy low, but it's just the price. Now this card here is one of the most beautiful E-Series hollows. Hands down. I need you to tell me. I need I need some like I need people to agree with me on this one. That the Pichu Hollow from Expedition is out of this world. I need you to say it's out of this world. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and then there's a right. <laughs> The stars coming off this is so cool. Who did this? Oh, Nishida, obviously. Beautiful artwork. Only two Raichus. Polyrath. I think that says Polyrath. Yukimori. So Magmi. And now, you know, Magby. I don't know if Magmi should, should have got a hollow in this set. Personally, probably not. But, you know, when you have cards like... Polyrath, Raichu, I mean, even Pichu got a hollow, so I guess Pichu was really good. He's a baby Pokemon too. You got Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur in this set. I don't know, maybe Machamp has a hollow. Maybe Magby and Pichu didn't need to be hollows. I'm glad Pichu is. But without, if Magby didn't, then Pichu wouldn't get one, so I'm happy that Pichu got one, so maybe Magby can have one. Golem, who's this by? Kasube. Very nice. Champ. It always feels like this card has its hot, like, they kind of just cut the picture off. Like, I don't know why they didn't show more of his head and not just, like, his crotch area, but it's fine, I guess. Fighting type. And for those wondering why I'm sorting into type, this is just how I sort my cards for listing. I just do them into type. It's the easiest for my inventory. Set is pretty good. We got a, what is this, Mysterious Mountains Beedrill. You know, set is good, but type is also nice. Got some more Radons. Oh, my. Two of this Arcanine. Oh, that Politoed. We're going to look at that in a second. This Arcanine. Let's check the condition. <laughs> we'll use the camera. Ooh. I mean, it's not rough. I will say it time and time again. This is perfectly fine for a card that's 25 years old almost. Well, actually, no. They're like 23 years old. Correct me, please. But that's not even edgeway. That's just dirt on the sleeve. This one's nice. I mean, one dot of wear at the top left. I actually think this one here on the front is like PSA 9 worthy. You know, as long as there's no scratches or anything crazy. Let's take this out. Look at this hollow pattern. Who did this one? Oh, yeah, Kasuba. Same guy that did the golem. They, they keep cutting off his cards like we can't see his legs in this one what's in the background some sort of maybe shrine or something oh, multiple facets of lighting here today took some advice from the previous video you know always trying to make my videos look nice because that's what we're trying to go for my last video was more of a gloomy night time this is i'm actually recording at eight o'clock today i'm up early just to do this because i want to go through these cards i want to check them I want to find the good condition ones. I, I want to look. Oh, is that Lugia up there? Oh. Or Aer Aerodactyl, maybe? No, surely that's Lugia. Maybe an Aerodactyl. What do you guys think that is Lugia? Up there, by the moon. Surely that has to be Lugia. My cat is attacking some stuff. I've got to stop him in a second because that's annoying. And we've got some Magnetons at the bottom. Stop that. Oh, he's not going to stop. 
He's not going to stop. Oh. I tried to record this and I had to redo it because I started the recording and my cat, Elf, is my little baby cat. He was sitting at my office door just going meow, meow, meow. I was like, I can't get away. I can't get away from him. Beautiful Starmie. There's actually so much detail in this Starmie. Kusajima. Okay. Whatever you're doing. Needs to stop. Oh, I might edit that out. Maybe not. Show you guys what it's like. This is why I can't do live streams. I also don't know if I can do live streams because my internet's really bad. Also, live streams is a different dynamic. I feel like you really have to... If you're live streaming, I feel like it's just a normal human thing to like put on a different kind of, I wouldn't say like different personality, but we all know, I watch live streamers every day. And we all know when people live stream, they're different to how they are normally. And I honestly just don't want to have to act that way. This beautiful magneton. The E-Series sets are some of the greatest of all time. I don't care what anyone says. Electro, there's not much going on in this, but maybe there's something in the background. No, it's just rocks and stars. Rocks and stars. That's a very blank card. Cargo. So what, we're getting into E4 now. Oh, now we're back into E3. This cat is so funny. Octillery. There's a lot of octillery. Ooh, there's a lot of octilleries. That's fine. Oh, split Earth Raichu. Is that any more? No, it's just four. It's just four. I always like this card because he's like looking from behind like rocks, but I wish it was a little bit brighter so you could see what was going on behind. Even I can't. I can't even see it in person and what's like behind this artwork. But if you shine the light on them, you can see it through the hollow pattern. It's just trees and stuff. Lightning. Whoa. Lantern. This is a nice one. Very nice. Very nice. I'm sounding Australian now. Very nice, mate. Yeah, mate. Very nice. Um, one magneton. Got to be careful the way I pick these up. Actually, let me scoop that up with my other magneton friend. Oh, we do have more. Tyranitar. Not the deck one. Is that the deck one? That is the deck one. The other one's not the deck one. I'm always getting confused. I'm, all, I'm getting confused. There's too many cards. I'm bringing these stacks closer. Now I know that I'm blocking the lightning type cards, but there's just too many cards. I can't show them all. We've got some Charbox. Vile Plume. Beautiful. Tenacruel. More Vile Plume. These are, I, there's a reason why these cards are like randomly upside down and moved around a little bit. These are the first ones I looked at. This is a beautiful Butterfree. I love this one. Who's this by? Kazuki, obviously. I thought it was Kazuki. The background so telling. Such strong colors with like black art outlines through everything. Swell right underneath that other butter. Butterfly. Butterfree. Did I say butterfly? I meant to say Butterfree. There's some more... Is there but a free? There we go. Pidgeot, Kamiya Pidgeot. Now, I think Kamiya has the Pidgeotto and the Pidgey from this set as well. Oh, it's Bugsy Scizor. That's Bugsy down there. And that is who is that? Claire, is it Claire Steelix? I can't remember. I know who it is. I just can't remember. Oh, more Ampharos. Thank, thank the Lord. I'll take that. Oh, we got a Feraligator. E1 Feraligator. Yeah, E1 has both starter trios. And then some Sloking. That's it. That's it for the for the holo cards. Uh, absolutely amazing. What an amazing experience, to be honest, for me to go through this. And then now to have it recorded so I can go through it again and again and again and again as I get older. And maybe when I get older, I'll wish that I didn't shave for this video because I feel like I look silly shaved. 
I guess I just don't look like I normally look, but it's so much more comfortable not having a beard sometimes, you know. And even I have to care a little bit more about being comfortable. Now I'm going to move these to the side. I'm going to talk a little bit more. And then I'm going to pull out some VS cards. Now I'm pretty sure with the VS cards, there's two boxes. Move these guys here. It's two boxes of VS. One of them is only Pokemon and one of them is only trainers. But I think... Yeah, this one looks like it's only trainer cards. Let me pull out one for you. Trainer cards aren't sleeved, but... Is this VS? This doesn't look like VS. This looks like web. Oh, no, that's that's VS. There we go. It's a VS series switch. It says VS at the bottom left. Oh, I'll put that back. Um, So it looks like you didn't sleeve the trainer cards. What's this? What's this? What are these? Oh, these are hollow. Unsleeved hollow as well. Rockets. No, rainbow energy and darkness energy. Unsleeved hollows. Okay, this guy's a madman. I'm going to put these up. And just because these are trainer cards and, and hollows doesn't mean they're not worth having sleeved, man. Some people are wild. But this guy's organization is top notch. Let me just take these out. What do we got here? Oh, yeah. VS, VS, VS. So let's sort these out a little bit. And... Oh, we have some trainer cards sleeved. Master Ball. Oh, it looks like some of these have a little bit of play on them. Like this has some dents on the front. Looks like it's got coin dents from being flipped. But then it's got the rest of them sleeved. I'm not sure. I need to put... Something here. Just like that. Checked my... VS trainer cards. Now let's get the other box. I'm not editing. I'm showing the whole process of my excitement. Now VS cards. I first found out what these were. 2018, I guess. No. 2016. When I bought a set from someone. I bought a non-holo set from someone. A long time ago. And... It was in 2016. I bought a non holo VS set. There was no holos or nothing. And it was like $50. Yeah. It wasn't much. It, well, I mean, back then, $50 was a lot of money. And I split it up and I sold it all separately. And that's when I first figured out, like, Lance's Charizard. And I was like, dude, why is there a Charizard in the set? And it's common. Everything was, like, so confusing because I'd never seen the cards before. I would just, I'd just never seen the cards before. And I'm, I wouldn't say that, like, oh, because of that moment is when I fell in love with VS cards. But I kind of, like, always knew they were there in the back of my mind. And then, sorry, I'm taking these out. I'm going slow. There's, there's a lot. There's a whole box here. Okay. I should have focused on just getting the cards out of the box rather than talking. But, yeah. 2016 is when I first came across these. And then maybe I'd say 2020, 2019 is when I bought a whole bunch, graded them, realized how popular they were and how like crazy it was. Just all the unique artworks and never even released in English. It was crazy. So I'm not going to go through, I'm not going to go through every artwork. I'm just going to, you know, sort the cards and talk about them. I think we moved the camera up for this one. So. That's all my holo cards over there. Non holo cards don't need as much as much love, I guess, as the holo cards. No, I take it back. Non holo cards need just as much love, but you can see them from all the way up there. I'm gonna just go through these. Is that another another Camille artwork? I think in the VS set, a lot of cards are done by the a lot of types are done by the same artist. Like, you'll see themes. Like, who's this? So this is fighting type, like... Oh. I know there's a bunch of grass type cards done by Camille. And I'm pretty sure it's the same for some other types. But I can't prove anything yet until we get there. So we got Yukiko Boba. That's how you say that. Doing Jolteon. But they also did Ampharos. But, you know, I'm just going to start sorting these as types. Get this done with. 
I'm, I'm, I should never do an early morning recorded video ever again. I, I need to get coffee in or something. <laughs> Look at the hair. This is my waking up hair. I literally woke up, had some breakfast, ran straight to the computer to start recording so I could start digging through these. Now look at all this VS. Now the VS is the same as, you know, same as everything else, but this right here, you can see the condition of them. Now, as far as I'm concerned, a lot of these have like, you know, dinged up corners and stuff. A lot of the edge where you can't see, oh, my cat's gone crazy. <laughs> Get out of it. Leaving that in. You guys see me stand up in my boxes? I don't think so. Um, as, you know, the, the edge wear on these, there is some, but it's not crazy. So a lot of these will be sold, played, near mint. Not much to grey with the VS. I did check. But that's good. That's what I wanted. I kind of want my... Like my single store, I'm not going to lie... A lot of my prices are a lot higher than most people. Just because I know, like, when push comes to shove, a lot of these cards, they're not that easy to come across. And the art of flipping, buy and sell, buy and sell, I've done that over the years for a long time. I'm now finally in a position where I can kind of, like, buy and slowly sell. So I'm not too interested in, like, selling a lot of stuff fast. I'm more interested in like building a catalog of my whole raw inventory. And, you know, because I think we have 20,000 cards listed at the moment, which is quite a lot. That has to be Claire's. That has to be Claire. Cla Caitlin? Claire? I'm not sure. So, yeah, we got 20,000 cards listed on the single store. Not everything's a crazy th card, and most of them are priced, you know, I'd say pretty fairly, but some of mine are a little bit higher. Pokemon cards are harder to get. Right now, they don't sell as well, but you never know what's going to happen in the future. So I'm kind of just preparing my single store, using it as kind of like an inventory museum. There's a lot of works going into it, but you'll see that some of my prices are a little bit high. Now, if you are you know, a watcher of the, of the YouTube, everything like that, supporter of everything, and you want something from me, and you think my price is you know, maybe a little bit too high, and you just want to buy it off me and not someone else, you can always feel free to reach out to me and I'll figure out a deal for you. Plus, I'm always doing like off-site sales to people. This is like mainly the graded card store. But singles, when people want to buy like 10, 15 more expensive cards, I don't mind doing the deal off eBay and then I'll just delist the cards. It's, it's not a big deal as well. So, yeah, that is an option because adding 15% onto the price just because of eBay fees and then some people have to pay like 10, 20% in tax. It gets a little bit rough sometimes. So... Oh, always willing to save money where I can for people. I just yawned. I got tired out of nowhere. Maybe back to bed for me. I usually get up at around 10, 11, 12 o'clock. I don't get up at 7, 8 o'clock and start recording videos. It's all normal type over there. Look at this. VS, 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 VS. I will cherish these. Now, the VS cards were around $6,000. They're a little bit cheaper overall than the holo cards, but they're not holo cards. They're, they're, and they don't sell as fast, and they're not as desirable. A lot of people have VS available. So, you know, it's not some uh, crazy world. The VS might be... I honestly might have overpaid. See, see a bunch of grass cards that are all done by Camille. Arbok, Aridos, Venomoth. Let's see, we got, is that Blaine's Macargo? Crobat's done by Kamiya, Shuckle's done by Kamiya. Weezing's done by Kamiya. So he does a bunch of grass type cards. I told you guys I was onto something. But maybe he's the only one in the VS set that has like a, a theme. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Maybe they do certain gym leaders. Maybe that might be the thing. Oh, we might have been onto it. Maybe they do certain gym leaders. Yes. I'm going to look into that after this. I think certain artists got given certain gym leaders. Maybe you guys agree. Maybe you don't. 
So, yeah. So I think the VS cards per card, I'm paying, I think I worked it out to be around $3 to $4. I wasn't, I'm not 100% on the amount of cards I got because I haven't counted them all fully yet. And then I wasn't given a count. So I had to kind of go on a whim. But I think I'm around like three, four Australian dollars, which some people will go, man, that's so cheap, or whatever, but that's a lot of money. They don't sell that fast. So, you know, you're willing to do a pretty decent investment in, uh, I guess, these cards if you're looking to like quick flip at that price. But I'll be listing, you know, near mint VS onto eBay, probably. One of the only sellers to have like almost every VS card in pretty close to near mint or better condition. Some of these are light plays, some of them are played. But they'll, they'll be up quite a bit. Oh my lord. We dropped one Noctowl. I have to pick this up. You guys ever dropped a card on the floor and then you like go to get it and you roll over it? Have you ever done that before? I did that with a base set Hitmonchan a long time ago. And it got destroyed. And I'm still upset about it. And also, I sent a card to PSA. This is a funny story. I sent a card to PSA a long time ago. Whitney's Club Fable. Great card. Oh, yeah. All the Whitney cards are done by Mickey Tanaka. I think we cracked it. They have certain gym leaders that they do, not certain types. Um, I sent a card to PSA. Uh, Near Revelation English... Raikal, Raiko, however you want to say it. Wow, Dragonine. A lot of them. A lot of Dragonines. And <laughs> they like emailed my middleman because I didn't submit to PSA myself at the time. It was like 2016. And they emailed my middleman and my middleman goes, Hey Steve, your Raikal got a 2.5 at PSA. Um, they've said they've damaged it. I talked to my PSA ref. This is when PSA, you know, they were big, but it wasn't as crazy. Like, it was, it, PSA wasn't at the point where, like, you weren't even able to get, like, oh, Claire's Gyarados. It must be Claire. I think that's Claire. Look at it. PSA wasn't at the point where you just couldn't get any customer service, really. Like, I think that's their worst thing right now, that they just have, like, very terrible customer service. It is there. And you can get a response, but for how big the company is, it should be better. But almost every company in the whole world's customer service is just terrible. And that's that's a terrible excuse to give them. Every cust company should probably have better customer service, but that's just how it is. Yukimori must have Bruno as her trainer, because all those cards. Hit on top, the champ. Him on Lee. Did we already do Hitmonchan, maybe? Did we do Hitmonchan already? Is he here? No, nah, but you see, these are all Yukimoris. So yeah, they're like, oh yeah, the PSA employee, you know, it was reported that they rolled over your card and the original grade was a 7 and they graded it a 2.5. But they paid me $100. That was the bulk value, $100 per card. I mean, that's not bad, right? Even back then, a PSA 7 near Revelation right cow wasn't worth $100. So by them rolling over the card, I actually made money. Which I actually think is pretty cool. <laughs> well, this is the Hitmonchan. Yukimori Hitmonchan. That's pretty cool. I, there might be a Thai Rogue somewhere. So we have someone's Quagsire. Oh, who is this? You guys know who that is. It's not price. It's someone else. I kind of keep forgetting where my where my stacks are, and I just keep putting cards on top of random cards. Um, Oyster, Pillar Swine, amazing. Will's Executor. Oh, I don't think they have any of these. The only cards that I really think are going to be missing are going to be Lance's Charizard and Claire's Blastoise. They're probably two of the most expensive non holo cards, so it's completely understandable. When people usually sell all their things in like mass bulk, they pull out the most expensive things, probably to sell them in singles. I mean, we got eight Morty's Gengars, that's not bad. 
and we got like 12 Lances Dragonite. I mean, I'm happy with that. I'm going to check the condition of some of these Morty's Gengars as well. I'm going to show you guys. I know you guys want to see more conditions. Let's check the conditions. Morty's Gengars. I mean, look, one has a bit of edge at the top. They all have a little bit. This one here. Not bad. I'd probably say maybe one or two played. The rest are near mint. That's not bad. Wow, look at that. Morty's Gengar. How many is that? There's eight. Yep, that's not bad. Happy with that. Um, more here? We're almost done with the VS. I'm almost done taking up your morning, your night, your yeah, I'm yapping. This is... Thank you so much, right, for sharing this with me. That's all this channel really is, me sharing. Me sharing my everyday business stuff. I, I was thinking about doing, like, I really like the vlog style about how smooth it is and we got the camera, you're just talking into it. Same as this, right? But like more of me moving around and showing stuff that I'm doing. It's just hard to like do it around the house because, you know, I don't want to show off my house a whole bunch. I don't want to show off, I guess, make note of like where I live. I don't want to make note of, I mean, if, you, if you're showing off your house all the time, you know, I got five cats and I got a dog. And we've got two people living here, working from home. It's a little bit hard to keep an absolutely pristine looking house all the time for vlogging. And it's a little bit hard to keep a pristine looking office all the time because I'm working in it every day. It's not always perfect condition. <laughs> it's not PSA tenders office. You know, it's it uh, goes through phases. You know, right now when I'm recording, there's cards everywhere. I moved a whole bunch of stuff over this desk. I pushed it everywhere. So if I'm vlogging, I don't want you guys to think I'm living in like a sty. There's a Will's Espion, by the way. This is a great card. Someone's flare around. I'm sure I'll learn. Someone's at another Espion. When I start listing these, I'll learn all the names. Easy. Oh, there is Blastoise. This must be Claire. Claire's Blastoise. We got seven of them. Okay. So the only card we're missing is Lance's Charizard. Which is the only card people want. Most of the time. <laughs> it's funny how that happens. Oh, man. See, so, yeah, I probably want to do more, like, not just, not like, day in the life videos, but more like structured vlogs of 20 minutes, 15 minutes, showing what I'm getting up to, maybe a week, weekly vlog. Not not like a weekly vlog, but like just a, a vlog of all the stuff I do during, like, throughout the week, maybe. Less personal than, like, this video top down focusing on this, but... You know, I could show the cards off on the desk a little bit, and then I'll show some packages, and get some lunch. Maybe we go to, like, we go out for all the time, go to nurseries and stuff like that. You know, that kind of stuff. I'm not 100% certain, but I'm not really interested in um, creating content that's, like, super popularized and super, uh, you know, clickbait. Look at this, look at that. I'm just documenting my life. Pretty much. I wish I did more of it. You guys should too. Everyone should. Even if you make YouTube videos and you have them all unlisted, you should just do it because it's so worth it to look back and see and watch yourself grow, see where you came from. So then you can kind of reevaluate yourself every once in a while and be like, damn, I'm not doing too bad when you like, you know, see how far you've come. So something like that. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? What am I talking about? I'm gonna finish this video up before I go crazy. So we got BS cards, we got E series hollows. I really hope you guys enjoyed me going through those. This is just out of this world. I can't believe those hollow patterns matched. That was hilarious and awesome. I'm gonna go through these cards. Oh man, look at the condition. It's gonna be a long time to condition check these. This video is gonna be up well before these cards are ever gonna be for sale. It's going to take me, you know, a few weeks to get through this. <laughs> so, oh, just one man. I'm just one Steve. So, yeah, there's more VS cards, but it's all trainer cards and they're all on sleeve. I don't want to go through them, you know, on camera and destroy the conditions a whole bunch. But I'm going to go sleeve those up. Look at the rest. Oh, my mail. I can't say bye. I bought some promo cards. I've been getting into a lot of 
all the promo cards recently. So I've got a bunch of Dragonite FB promos. They're actually quite expensive, like $100 each. Some more of the DPP era uh, promos from that era. Some random grass energies. Parishu, Pipple Up. I love this artwork. It's really good. What else we got here? We got... Um, this is always a cool promo card for most people. Battle Tower. Everyone knows what the Battle Tower is. Got a whole bunch of Battle Towers. I haven't been buying too much else. Obviously, I went to Japan. I bought a bunch of cards while I was in Japan. I always trying to buy stuff online when I see it. We got some Misty's Tears. I love that card. Some random signed Charizard. Some unknown reverse cards. Someone sold these for like $25 each. I don't know what they were doing. And then Mr. Mime, Best of XY. That was also like $30. PSA cards are actually so cheap in Japan, it's like not even funny. They sell on eBay for like three, four times as much for some on like the lower end. And then they sell, I, I don't know why people do that to themselves. So oh, we're at 58 minutes in, so we'll cut it soon. And just some more singles that I bought, some shiny collection stuff, some, some play stuff, some Nibin stuff. I'll have to go through and condition check everything. Soul Silver Reverse Pikachus. The condition's not even that bad. Pretty happy with that. So, my name's Steve. I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, enjoy the E-Series cards and have a great day, you know. Try to, I don't want to say anything inspirational at the end. I was going to think about something to say inspirational, but just keep being you. Keep doing your best. Just keep on the grind. Find some happiness and find some, you know, get back something from the grind. Don't just do it just for the pursuit of like, you know, more wealth or more money. Try to find something that you actually really enjoy, and then you get it. I like to get more cards, and that's what makes me happy. So if I sell some of these, I'll be able to buy more of these cards in the future. And that's the whole idea behind this. I first started off with maybe one or two VS cards. Now I'm up to like 20. And if I sell 20, I might be able to get to 25. And maybe I can get more and more cards. So my pursuit is cards. But in the greater pursuit of happiness, this is what makes me happy. So try and find yours. I'm always here on Instagram if you ever want to talk. If you ever want to ask a deep question, feel free to ask on Ask Steve. Other than that, I'm signing off finally. Goodbye. Thank you so much.